So hello and welcome to a Film Exologist, the place on the internet thingy where holy fine-tuning secrets are revealed. Now, case in point, this list uh, 8007, this is a 390 CFM carb, and what this carb, obviously this carb needs a lot of attention, I'm going to be fully restoring this carb during the video, but, but what I want to do in this particular episode is that I want to discuss what are the benefits or disbenefits of having a secondary metering block in a kind of 4160 style holly. Um, what are the pros, what are the cons? So I'll come and I'll, I'll show you a bit closer. Okay, so as you can see here, what this carb, um, your your typical kind of 4160 style carb, generally doesn't have this thing here. This is a, me a secondary metering block, like the primary metering block, which I'm pointing to here. So what this allows you is, it allows you the possibility of changing the jetting on the secondary as well as the primary. Because normally, uh, the, the kind of 4160 style hollies, what they do is they have this thing called the metering plate and basically if you look here the metering plate has kind of like fixed orifices uh, and and therefore that's it. these are your fuel passages right here now can you vary a metering plate? yes I mean technically you could drill this out and you can get, and it will be the equivalent of putting bigger jetting. The problem is that on on metering plates, this is a one-way street. Once you once you drill them out, that's it. You can't go go back. You can experiment. Whilst on uh, secondary metering plates, what you can do is you can take the jetting down, and if that doesn't work, you can take the jetting back up. You just change the jets, and you're golden. So. This is really the main advantage of them. Now, turning to this particular, there is one thing that I need to point out that is one of my pet hates, uh, which is this thing here. As you can see, somebody has, in their infinite and manifold wisdom, tried to turn this into a double pump or carb by blocking this and making it so that it opens simultaneously. This, like, shouldn't happen. Uh, if you want a double pump of a carb, just pay the money and just buy a double pump of carb, okay? It's, this just rarely works um, like this because it needs the, the primaries need a lot more travel than this. Uh, in order to, in, uh, because doing like this is going to create like a bog um, on the engine. So this is really not something um, that I would recommend. And during the course of this project of this build this is going to be um, this is going to be fixed uh, properly now I, I know obviously you you've got this unit that I think the choke needs uh, a bit of attention but that's fine we'll do that so what we need to do now is start with the disassembly process and see what we're working with now So as you can see at the moment, I've built, um, let's say, the, the, the basics of, uh, of the carb, the fuel bowls and, and everything. Uh, I'm going to tell you in a minute what I jetted it, what I jetted the carburetor uh, for. However, before I do that, I need to show you a couple of things around the secondary. Because uh, if you remember at the beginning of the video, I showed that the, the somebody had put 
Kursk's jammed, uh, jammed something in, in the secondary so that it would actuate because the basically what happened was that the um, the secondary diaphragm was completely perished but I need to show you some a very important detail about Holly's secondary diaphragms so basically Holly as you can see I've got I've got I've got this is the original one and this is a replacement one but what happens Holly has essentially two different styles one that I call the short stem which is this one and this one which is a la which is a longer stem so if I put them side by side here you can see that one is longer than the other now and they have corresponding kind of levers that go that go to the shaft so this this sort of lever goes with the short short stem um, diaphragm whilst the longer levers go with this style diaphragm so basically what, I, what, I, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be building the the vacuum the vacuum pod with this longer style but I'm going to change swap over the um, the actuator with this which is the right uh, which is the right uh, compatibility for this part rather than this one which is the original one but it wouldn't have worked as you can see it's, it's a slight different angle so you can mix the parts like this but what you can't do is you can't put this part on the long stem one because it tops out and it doesn't allow the secondaries to open so that's um that's that's a little tip there for you when you see this long stem okay if you see either this and short stem not okay if you see short stem and this we're okay Okay, so now as you can see, we've got the unit that is fully complete with this vacuum secondary and also I changed the choke to an auto choke, uh, electric choke, uh, because this was the how the unit came from the factory with an auto choke. So therefore I thought, well, do you know what, I'm going to restore it just as it should be from the factory, plus the other choke was missing the bracket here that you need for the for the actuator so obviously it was an auto choke when it came to out of the factory so now it's back being an auto choke as it should be I want to talk a bit about jetting now what do you what you do with the with these carbs generally is you go and you find uh, a carb of the same capacity and you look at the jetting so this carb came with 56s on the secondary so 51 56 and I thought Whoa, that's gonna be a bit way too lean I mean even though I'm gonna use it on a this is like for a Rover 3.5 V8 so I looked at the manual and the closest one I could find was a 4150 that it has 62 uh, jets on the on the, on the rear so what I did is I kind of split the difference and I put 59s on so you got 51 59 which that that is gonna I'm, I'm reasonably confident that should work very well for for a rover if not pro maybe a little bit on the leanish side which is, which is okay uh, but at least it's not gonna burn the pistons because you can't go too lean on the scarves because that could have implications for the pistons in the engine you don't want to break them um, so anyway um, hope you got something out of this 
Um, this is gonna be the end of uh, the end of the episode. This is a this this actually is a pretty decent carb. Um, so it is, it's not going to be cheap. But anyway, that's up to that's up to the customer that's gonna have to pay. So uh, I hope you got something out of this. Uh, if you got any comments, put it down in the comments, and I'll see you in the next episode.